Okay, that's how that go. That shit was cool. I enjoyed that a little bit. The niggas don't know nothing about loyalty. They gonna speak on loyalty. On my mama, cuz. If I'm lying, let the dead homies get up and die again, cuz. <laughs> this nigga got a bromance with Fat Joe. No disrespect to Fat Joe. But this shit is crazy, cuz. I seen 50 do some of the G shit and rap, cuz, to Fat Joe. I, I seen a video where both these niggas commented on it. This nigga Fat Joe outright lie about the incident, about how it happened. And this nigga 50, like, co-signed the lie. Because we was in motherfucking Florida at a at a real uh, prestigious type. I don't know if it was MTV. I think it was MTV Awards or something, because it was a big award ceremony. The first time that nigga R. Kelly did that trapped in the closet shit live, he did a gang of chapters. That nigga Puffy did the like the intro. I remember that nigga game had on an all white dress suit with like a uh color fly. I was like, oh, it's like I seen how he had put that together. He had like the red C hat with the red like necktie, but Cud had on like an all white dress suit. And he, and he was like in a basketball arena, and Cud was sitting like directly across from us. So I remember seeing him, and it was early. You know, in the experience to where it was just because niggas not, you know, I know cuz, so I think that was the first time since shit had been what it was that we was at a venue. And it was just, I don't know if it was the first, but it was just kind of like, you know, interesting to see. So I remember sitting where I was sitting, noticing that Stutter Block Box from Main Street was there with Shaq. And I remember the nigga uh, Puffy came out. I mean, I'm G Unit to the fullest. I'm, nigga, uh, I remember feeling. Bad, feeling fucked up because this nigga Puffy came out, cuz, and did the introduction. And it was like a real magical moment. He was like, they, they dropped the lights, the lights, and he was like, I see stars, it's a magical night. And he started pointing out the stars. He was like, I see Mariah Carey, I see Shaquille O'Neal. And the way they had the entertainers sitting, 50 was right in the line of the row of niggas for Puffy to just say his name coming up next in that row. But he obviously went down that road, pointed out everybody that was a high-profile celebrity and skipped right over 50. So off top, 50 irritated. I could tell. But the way my nigga had was getting down, that he had seats where them superstars were sitting down on the front row. He had a seat for himself and maybe another person. But the niggas that wasn't, who didn't really have no face, we had like two rows up there. We like 20 deep. Zero police. So, uh, what happened was, this nigga Fat Joe, I'm just giving history, y'all. I'm not even giving my opinion on none of these incidents. Nigga, this is history, nigga. You know how I many people, Beyonce was in the building. There was so many people in this building. I can't believe that they're both able to give an account of this story with the untrue account of it. But anyway, this nigga Fat Joe was giving a motherfucking announcement to a war. You know how the war ceremony be. You up there at that podium with that little microphone. He reading the teleprompter. This nigga 50 cuz in the middle of everything. Dead homies cuz. I say from the distance of the free throw line to the actual goal post. 50 just got up and mopped across the stage. And like mad dog cuz while he was reading. I remember cuz was looking at the teleprompter and looked up to see me was, what was happening. Cuz swallowed like he had a big ass softball in his throat. Like what the fuck? And then 50 just mob crossing. And I looked at cuz crazy as a motherfucker. Like, all that fighting talk, nigga. If Fat Joe wanted to fight, nigga, the fight was right there. You know what I'm saying? Cut and rush cuz. He could have rushed cuz, but he didn't rush cuz, but he gave cuz. All that action was nothing between them about five, six steps. So then well, Fat Joe, like, kind of gathered himself and started giving his, uh, a, a delivering the award again. The nigga 50, like, to, in, in order to distract the attention, he started mobbing around like the first few rows of fans, dapping people up, wop, 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 wop. And then um, that was over. So a couple of other little things happened. This person did that, that person sang. Then this nigga Fat Joe had the opportunity to take the podium again. I don't know if he was giving another award or he was announcing something. And this time, he took the uh, upon himself to say, oh, I want to feel help. Let you know I feel real safe tonight. Something to this effect. And I want to thank G-Unit for that, for all the police presence in the building. Now, I'm with Murder Mace is sitting right next to me. Yeah, bad boy Murder Mace. Cause he got a bright-ass yellow suit jacket on. Give you the image of the Murder Mace that we all assume him to be from TV, right? 
So when in fact Joe finished saying that, cuz get we see the terror squad niggas get up as a group, like they finna exit the building. They across direct, directly across the arena too, like on the side where game at. So when dead homies, cuz on my mama, cuz when I when, when I see the niggas get up, I ask the niggas women, I like, hey cuz, do y'all know how to get to where the car's at from where they going? Cause they like in the arena, you know, you get out and you go through the little tunnel, they finna disappear out of sight. The homies was like, yeah. So immediately we get up, our whole road, we going backstage, full speed, trying to find these niggas. Dead homies, cuz when I we get to a point to where we going down, it's a hallway where a door entering right there. Fadjo on them terror squad niggas, full speed, nigga, was breaking their neck to get away from us to get through a door. Me and Mace was running el shoulder to shoulder, cuz Mace, all that goofy shit, that, that smiley shit, that shit was gone, cuz was shoulder to shoulder with me, full speed, trying to get to the action. We got up to about maybe half a basketball court length away from the niggas as they went through a certain door. So we like wolves and drooling at the mouth, like, ooh. Cause I swear to God, on all my kids, cuz when we walked through that door, cuz was a gang of police posted, told us, y'all don't want to do that. Y'all don't want to do that. They entered in that door and went out another door to the parking structure, got in their vehicles, and we just like halted right there where the police at. And just like, we were like, whoa, it wasn't nothing else, nothing, else, nothing else we could do. Now, I seen these niggas both giving an account on that same little video clip I posted today, the longer version. This nigga give an account of that <laughs> award ceremony. It go like that. On my dead homies and my daughters. Nigga, you niggas ran, cuz. Fat cuz ran fast as fuck. Gang of witnesses, my nigga. It ain't no secret. Yeah. Shout out to Fat Joe, though. Him and, him and his boy 50, they buddies down. That shit crazy. Ask Fat Joe, nigga, that when that shit was cracking, nigga, did he, did he have conversations with Inglewood Mugs, like, about... You know, his, his his arrival on the West Coast in the periods of time. Me and my nigga Muggs used to have the politic. I ain't going to say I threatened cuz or none of that. And I ain't going to say cuz, like, talk to me and ask me no whole shit or nothing. Shouts out to Inglewood Muggs, though. Plenty of conversations. I ain't lying. Stop me when I lie. Yeah, it's crazy to see them cool. That nigga was so disrespectful to 50 Cent. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I would have never thought. It's just ironic, cuz, cuz, cuz really smashed, cuz, like, he blew my mind when he had walked across cuz stage like that, cuz, at that award show, cuz. Any celebrity that was there that day, y'all know what happened. Anybody want to chime in? You know? The truth don't really need no support or no cosign to be what it is because it is what it is. But, you know, I know some people might have doubts. How's my relationship with Tony Ayo? It's non-existent. But to let you know, though, when it was, <clears throat> he the last one that I had some communication with. He the last one that was able to was still answering his phone, telling me he going to holler at 50 and see what 50 talking about. And he never really was able to give me, like, a response to the point where, you know, I know 50 told him, like, Psh. so he just stopped communicating himself. But he tried, cuz. Yeah, it was the last one, cuz. Yeah, it was the first, not the, he was the first nigga to put me on the G-Unit project, cuz. was fresh out the pen. He smelled what a nigga was all about. Flew me to New York. He had a studio in his house. Held up his album so I could get on it, man. For that type of shit, it's kind of hard not to appreciate. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, ain't really had no power to, like, Make my situation go no difference in the long run. But I own my mama, cuz tried. I don't have no contact with Banks, man. I ain't never had a fallout with Banks, no negative. It was like shocking to see when cuz just stopped communicating with me, too, cuz cuz was a nigga that used to just like pick up the phone and check on me out the blue. Blue F, man, cuz like we had like a decent connection, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm my mama only son, so I often found myself through the years like seeking brotherhood and shit like that and niggas and the shit was never 100 as much as I always put into it, my nigga. I always find myself, like, willing to do more for the situation than the next nigga, cuz.
Black Stars, I gotta let you in. This nigga probably got more Baymax Spider Low gear than any one fan outside of Ivan Rowland or somebody. I thought I accepted it. Where you at, Black Star? I tried to accept your shit. Let me go. I'm gonna go look at some of these questions I missed, y'all. What up, Pat Blue? Peace, Murph in the cut. Should be put in the cut. Damn. Drop my shit. Okay, I'm back. I guess I'm back uh, up to date. Original block boy. Career. De Niro, what do you mean just career? That song with Yayo, my shit, 05, it is what it is. Hey, that nigga, yeah, yo, crazy in the motherfucking time. We get to the studio, I do my shit, and then, like, after I finish my verse, he like, hey, yo, son, talk that gang code. I'm like, all right. So I go in there, I'm like, yeah, nice Elm Street neighborhood. He say, ooh, I come out the city, like, no, son, talk that code. That, that, you know, that, that that gang code, the L.A. shit. I'm like, damn, I go back in the booth, I say some more shit. Cuz still weren't really satisfied. I never really understood what Cuz wanted me to say. He was just like, yo, son, talk that gang code. Talk that shit. I think, yeah, yo, it's a fool. Mike Knox. We had collab. I don't think I ever actually might. Have I met Mike Knox in person? I can't remember, but we collabed because he was affiliated with the uh, click. And spoke on the phone, did music and all that. He was solid from the, my interaction with him. It wasn't much to judge from, but I can't say nothing bad about Mike Knox. Can't really tell you what's happening with him either. He say, Mike Knox, let me think about Philly. Let me think about my nigga Cash Daddy and Beano. What that shit do, my killers? She about to cheat. I don't know if I waved at you or not, but I try to wave at all y'all as y'all in it. I'm waving now. What happened with you and Slow? Cut this nigga Slow, cut. I thought Slow was a real one, cut. This is a nigga who, when Slow was dusty, cuz, and I was coming to New York, cut used to hold me down like four flat tires, cuz. Another nigga that just, I'm talking about, I call Winslow, cause I used to get to motherfucking New York. I get to the motherfucking G in the office, and they like, what you want to do, low? One of my rituals had become was to go to Queens and go to the Coliseum, because it reminded me of the swap meet and shit. So, uh, the process had became Deshaun, which is Bruce's son, who was 50's driver, the same nigga that uh, Mayweather referring to when he talked about uh, Bruce was his driver, his son, was my low is my low sticks they saw he drives for uh mayweather now too tmt but anyway cuz was typically the person that would be holding me down in the 16 passenger van when i got to new york and uh so uh he'd be like what you want to do look i'd like go to the coliseum so he'll call winslow first thing he'd do is call winslow he'd be like yo slow i got loke out here you trying to hit the coliseum so the process would be that from that point it'd say Winslow, no, no more than an hour to get to the office. He get get there, piece me up, dap me up, big love. Like, what's up, bro? What you want to do? I'm trying to hit some cones with my nigga. Like, say no more, let's go. We hop in the 16 passenger van, and it might take us close to an hour to get to the Coliseum. Winslow on the phone the whole time. By the time we get to the Coliseum, my nigga, this niggas, this car's pulling up everywhere, <laughs> parking, jumping out on point. Including Lloyd Banks, little brother. I, I'll forget Cuz Night. We used to look, he was a younger, look just like a younger version, solid. Niggas used to pull up, form like, they all show me love, get around me. They form like a, a, a protective circle around me, Cuz, without nobody saying, hey, do this, do that. It just would naturally form around me. And then we would push through the city and through the Coliseum at such, at such an aggressive pace. And these niggas come through the places, the mixtape shops and and the t-shirt shops, nigga Winslow coming through this motherfucker like, yo, what up? I got Loki in the building. What's good? G-Unit, G-Unit West. What up, yo? You Loki, you Crip. He like looking on the wall, seeing all the different mixtapes. Like, yo, ain't got my man shit up here? If it's not an empty space to place my shit, Winslow is snatching nigga shit. Man, take this bum nigga shit down. Put my shit up there. Making these niggas take pictures. Making them put my pictures up there and making them become familiar with me. Like, yeah, Loki in the building, whatever, whatever. So, uh, that was the bulk of our interaction. He coming to the West Coast, 
uh, he get the same action from me and my nigga Puto. He, he was my nigga. You go look at the Tony Ayo, Tony Ayo and Joe video, you see him in the back cameo and my nigga in the back cameo too. He was just like tight. So Flash, you know, the whole 50 Cent shit separated. Nigga like lose touch with Winslow. No negativity, just lose touch with the whole, you know, energy over there. Then like we'll, we'll start hearing the news that uh, Slow Bucks 50. See the headlines on the internet. Didn't really know nothing about it. Slow buck fifty. Slow buck fifty. Then uh, one day, me and Puto was watching something like, and we actually seen video footage of somebody discussing the motherfucking incident. And I see the nigga. I'm like, Cuz Slow Bucks. I said, That's Winslow. So I'm telling you the relationship I have with Winslow. My mind immediately like, Cuz Winslow Rich. We own. That's the homie. Cuz like, no, that's the homie. Like, what? Wow, that's what's easy math. God, but then I don't have no, I don't have a clue on how to get into Winslow. Then I look up Pete Pan. Everything that this nigga Nipsey do that was elite, I see Winslow right there on the cut. I'm like, oh, easy call, get that slow. Cause that didn't work like that. Cause I'm like, hmm, that wasn't even no easy way to get. I mean, get out nip. That wasn't even no easy way to get that slow. So I'm like thinking, oh, I ain't gonna, still not assuming that this nigga Winslow think he bigger than life. I don't know what it was, cause so. Long story short, I can't remember all the details how it went. We eventually get on the phone with Cuz. I say, Cuz, all I know, this is what Winslow jumped on the phone and told me, yo, Spider, all I know is, all I know how to think. When I think about a nigga I ain't seen in a long time, I think about how it was the last time it was I seen him. And when we reunite, I pick up from there. So that's once again, I'm like, I, we own. This is my nigga. We good, my nigga. Woo, woo. I'm, I'm coming to New York soon. I'm going to holler when I get there. Lo and behold, I end up going to New York shortly after that. It's miscommunication. I, at that point, I was calling the janky promoter. But since then, I done reconciled with my nigga who had called me out there. But at the point, I'm calling Winslow like on some janky promoter shit. I'm stuck at the airport. Cuz, answer me on FaceTime, me and Puto. I'm on my way, son. Never show up. My nigga Cash Daddy and Bino drove from motherfucking Philly to uh, 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 JFK to come get us, cuz. So now we out here. Moving around the city with these niggas. Steady hitting Winslow phone up. The promoter supposed to have a little change for us. Shit ain't right. They ain't really got no accommodations keeping the hood crib. So a nigga really out here fucked up. And like, that ain't something they're going to run around telling everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, but this is what happened. I got a homie named Winslow. I'm Gucci. I'm in New York. You know what I'm saying? Slow bucks. So I get on the phone with Cud. Let him know my situation. Cud let me know. All right, I'm going to have you pull up on me. Woo. Like I say, he don't ever come. Then after I got back in touch with him. So I'm blowing his phone up the next day. He ain't answering. He ain't answering. He ain't answering. So texting him. He ain't answering. I'm being very respectful. Dead homies, cuz. I eventually sent him one of them, your bitch-ass nigga texts. Then he respond. Woo-hoo. He give me an address where I can pull up on him. Pull up on the address. He not there. <clears throat> cuz that clip y'all seen, cuz. By the time y'all seen that, by the time I had seen him right there, he had gave me two addresses he wasn't at. And then finally, like 2, 3 in the morning, I think it's called Giuliani's or something. In Manhattan or something, it's like a, it's like the Beverly Hills area. He was at a, a, a late night spot. He let me pull up on him. When I get when I, I go in there, it's me. We four deep. Me, Puto, Bino, and uh, Cash Daddy. He in there having like a nice dinner, like with, I say anywhere between fifteen to twenty people in a very small room. So it looked like thirty or forty. Jules Santana, a lot of other like little, I guess high profile behind the scene industry niggas some street niggas it was a fly little shit walk in winslow give me like a half ounce of weed some font i leave somebody gonna give me a few dollars to get us situated and all that shit then somehow the dollars didn't wasn't they go able to go and be coming till tomorrow and then cuz stop answering his phone that, that little clip you see out there on the streets was like in the morning i'm gonna have something for you i didn't know you that fucked up look i got you say no more did this nigga gonna like he see my nigga uh, Cash Daddy standing there, ain't got shit to say. So he like, what up, my nigga? You from New York? My nigga like, nah, I'm from Philly. He like, oh, oh, you from Philly? He like, yeah. He like, oh, yeah, I'm from Philly. I fuck with niggas like me, Miller Philly. This slow bus. So uh, my nigga Cash Daddy like, yeah, that boy know me. So he was like, oh, yeah, work. So he trying to like put my nigga on the spot. He gonna call Meek Mills on the FaceTime in the middle of the night and try to let him see my nigga face, cuz. Like, 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 like trying to shit on my nigga, cuz. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Cut out there talking all high power with no big ass fake teeth in his mouth, trying to hold all that spit in. 
trying to point out little cars parked around like them was just hitting niggas had eyes on him like he was safe and all that. All that was cool, cuz. My thing was, without your words, you were shell of a man. I lost respect for you, nigga, and we can never be friends. EC. You feel me? Let me go back and see what I met. Industry niggas is hoes, cuz. Bottom line. I ain't talked to Foley in a sec. A second. Louis Lloyd, I lost me. You still coaching the kids? No more coaching. Uh uh. Yeah, he Hollywood as fuck. Come on, he married to a Shante sister. No, I don't give a fuck, nigga. I ain't no mess. This industry a mess. These niggas is a mess. I'm a mess maker. Yeah, y'all go run and tell Slow that and tell him to stop me where I lied at, nigga. Yo, you don't cool with P. Smurf. And I hadn't seen that video of that nigga sitting in that room talking to all them white folks when I was on his bumper trying to, you know, keep that old energy back how it was. I ain't know. I don't know if he was ashamed to really be around me. Yeah, I spoke to Criminal a couple months ago. I'm on his new project. Check that shit out. Uh, a song called uh, Grimy. My verse say, uh, never bragging. Matter of fact, get a Lord thanks. Avoid it ever getting rushed up in them court tanks. Gang of squabbles. Win some, lose some. Get packed out. Get a pass. Depending on where you from. And amigos. Everybody got those. Overlook it when it's on with the Vatos. Segregated essays too deep to deal with. Back to black on black. That's whack on some real shit. It is what it is, though. Don't turn nothing down. White, black, or brown when my turn come around. I claimed the 90s with my banged up crimes. Trying to put it all behind me. I came up grimy. Yeah, that's all my shit going on. Criminal shit. Go get that. It's called grimy. Yeah, that was the old one you talking about. Uh, what was it? Stop. I forget. Damn, man. This motherfucker, like, ended on his own last time. I was trying to ride it out, but goddamn. Ain't my business, Kanan. I hate to run on y'all, but you know what? I really need me.